Welcome to your Barbados Today Evening News Update for Tuesday, April 30th. So glad you can join us. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. The chairman of the Transport Board, Gregory Nichols, resigned this evening. Nichols confirmed to Barbados Today that he had parted ways with the state-owned entity, but did not offer further comment. The family and friends of the island's latest murder victim are searching for answers following what they describe as a senseless killing. 27-year-old Anthony Nurse died shortly after he was stabbed at Stratford Hill, the Point St. Michael, yesterday. When Bobby Destiny visited the community, many described him as a good man who was easygoing. Shopkeeper Rhonda Hollingsworth says the incident was shocking, especially since Nurse was a peaceful person. Knowing him, I know he's not a troublesome person. If he got something to tell you, he's going to tell you. But if you ain't have a disagreement with what the other say, you ain't saying nothing, you pretend it, you're not there. Which I respect as a young boy. You don't like trouble. You try, like, if he did it first, but you, the pastor got a little call. You were saying, man, I'm going to stop that, I wouldn't be here. If then call for one of his youngsters growing up, as I would say. And as I would say again, He's a person, if you have a noise with him, he's going to go out at the other side of the road, which I respect, and he's going to pass you straight. He's not going to say nothing. To In other news this Monday, it's payday for pensioners and other holders of government paper. Today, Minister of State in the Ministry of Finance, Rand Strawn, announced that the two groups will start to receive monthly payments as the state seeks to reduce its national debt. He made the announcement when he introduced the debt holder approval of debt restructuring amendment bill 2019 in the House of Assembly today. After the exchange offer in October of last year, the Ministry of Finance and the government sir, um, undertook to in a sense, sir, prepare. Um, specifically, sir, pensioners, as you are aware, sir, that in um, November of last year, um, we would have given a cash payment of up to $20,000 um, to um, pensioners, those persons 60 and above. In effect, sir, altering what the, the terms and conditions in terms of what we would have issued in October, and then we subsequently, sir, at the end of March of this year, then made an additional payment of up to $30,000, sir, such that anybody who would have held um, any government debt, sir, up to $50,000 would have been liquidated in cash, sir, um, up until the end of March of this year. Of this year. Minister of People Empowerment and Elder Affairs Cynthia Ford has ordered the management of the Child Care Board to investigate all cases of child abuse, whether the culprits are police, priests, or politicians. As she delivered remarks at the launch of Child Month, a fired up Ford said she and many others in society were fed up with reports of young girls and boys being molested. She told the Child Care Board to pass on the names and information of all alleged perpetrators to the police. And the people, people I'm talking about are not just the, own, the unknown man who was in the village that was a speculator. But we have police officers taking advantage according to what we read in the media sometimes. And according to what we know, we have teachers who are taking advantage of our young children. We have priests and caregivers and other counselors who know better. And because they're not being caught, they will get away. But Ms. Crawford, once a report is given to you and your director and your deputy director, and the chairman and the board, please deal with it. It will not be sincere unless somebody told a lie on me. It will not be me. But whoever it is, I don't care what status they carry, the police must be properly informed, they must do their work, and so must the court of law. All my people getting locked up for it. Whoever is a professional, go along with them too, because our children must have the purity of living and enjoying life with nobody touching them or penetrating them or entreating them in any way at all. 
Criminals are increasingly using the postal service to conduct their illegal activity. Word of this today from the second in command of the police drug squad, Inspector Glyn Yearwood. Speaking at a capacity building workshop at the Chipside headquarters of the Barbados Postal Service this morning, Yearwood noted that while the rise in technology is threatening to wipe out traditional postal services, criminals are exploiting the post to ship their contraband. In sports, the Caribbean Premier League is on. Today, officials announced the popular T20 series will bowl off a little later than the original August 21 start date. Chief Operating Officer of the CPL, Pete Russell, delivered the news at a press conference this morning. So we'll start on September 4. Um, uh, all, all games will be played in Jamaica this year, so we won't be playing any games in the US. Um, and that's really a decision uh, based on the franchise wanting to be Jamaican based. I think they realised last year probably splitting the games between both uh, the US and Jamaica was overly ambitious. Mm. Um, so we go through obviously the, the games, uh, the, well, the schedule is exactly the same as last year in terms of five home games for each team. We're adding one more game which is a third, fourth place playoff uh, game which will take place in Trinidad the Thursday before the final which is on the Saturday. Um, so nothing will change really in terms of the structure outside of that. Um, what is changing is what we're doing in terms of some of the work with Cricket West Indies and the, the development players. There's regional and international news after this short break. Barbados Today, news you can trust. To regional news now, Venezuela's opposition leader Juan Guaido today made his strongest call yet to the military to help him oust President Nicolas Maduro. The U.S. is back in the call while the United Nations is calling on all sides to exercise restraint. Anti-government protesters clashed with police in Caracas, and in Washington, the White House threw its support behind opposition leader Juan Guaido's call to overthrow the socialist government of President Nicolas Maduro. This is an act of bravery by Guaido and others, uh, really for the freedom of the Venezuelan people. U.S. National Security Advisor John Bolton on Tuesday called for a peaceful transfer of power from Maduro to Guaido. Bolton said American aid to the protesters would be overt and possibly covert. We have done everything we can to get humanitarian assistance uh, into the country. We're doing a lot of other things, some of which I'm not going to talk about. And he included this warning. All options are on the table. Maduro has called opposition leader Guaido a puppet of Washington. And on Tuesday, Venezuela's foreign minister Jorge Areaza blamed the U.S. for the violence, calling it an attempted coup backed by the White House. On the international scene, Mozambique urgently needs life-saving relief to deal with the destructive aftermath of Cyclone Kenneth. The aid organization Save the Children says the humanitarian situation is significant and life-threatening and more funds are needed. We get more in this report from the BBC in the northeast of the country where heavy rains are continuing to hamper aid efforts. It's taken us a couple of days to reach Pemba. Flights have been cancelled. Such were the weather conditions. This changeable weather is really hampering aid efforts. Yesterday, uh, the UN thought that they'd be able to get a plane out to one of the affected islands, had to turn back. So it's really a difficult situation. Fui 
Some of the places where people have been evacuated to are also taking on water, uh, so some people have had to be moved more than once. Aid agencies doing all they can to help, but uh, certainly at least one Save the Children calling for more international help, saying they just can't do all that they need to do with fun funding that they have at the moment. And that's news. But for the very latest, visit our website at www.mobilistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Isomi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. Good evening.